Now this is a, a selection of flies, uh, basically you could tie in quite a few different sizes but the main size is a, a 10, if you're going to be fishing uh, an island especially it's a very popular size. Now when you start with thread of the eye, then you tie in a tag, tag of uh, gold holographic tinsel, this one here. This is just a medium, so just need a length of it, which I have some in the desk, so I'm just going to catch it in the way down. So I'm using this as a guide to the thread turns as I wind down. If you keep it tight, it will control the turns and you can go faster. So we're going to come round the bend slightly and then come back up. To protect this, I wind over some, some super glue. So a wee touch of super glue, you can wee touch on the top. Uh, and as you wind it will take it around with the, each turn and we get to this point here just before it levels out and onto the shank so then we can take away the excess the tail this tail here is a Globrite floss number 11 this is a fine floss and to, like a fly like this would of course a very fine floss you need at least 10 strands so I wound, I, wound it, I wound it around my hand and then cut it away and then using an old toothbrush or so, I just brush it out and then that then becomes a, a nice thicker floss, an ideal for tails. Just line up the ends here. When you tie this the full length of the body, now there's, there's going to be a body hackle and two front hackles. So you give yourself plenty of room. You're looking for a tail length around about the body length. So we go there. We rub the fly with a small use wire or in this case an oval gold tinsel. So you catch this in full length and then just tie it in, just secure it in. So work your way up, get a nice piece of thread down. And come quickly back down to just beside our tail and then tie in some this is some gold light bright. You don't need much. You could use a tinsel if you want for the body, it's up to yourself. Just using the gold light bright uh, the gold light bright, it just gives it a better texture, a more natural like. Uh, as I say, you could use if the tinsel, it's up to yourself. So we start at the back and don't worry too much if you see a bit of orange coming through. It will once it's in the water you'll see the orange glow coming through the the dubbing. So we work our way up. So you give yourself plenty of room. At least around about so two to three mil. And then get yourself a nice hot orange. This is a cock cackle. It's a Chinese cock. You can use what you like. So we remove the fluff. Tie this in. And make sure you have a wee bit of wax on your thread. Get a bit more grip. I'm going to use the hackle pliers here, so we want to turn at the top and then we work our way through. Now don't be shy and don't worry if that happens. Tips usually break quite regular, so just go back in. Make sure it's tight. Try again. Just got to be patient with hackles. Sometimes it's like that. They go in straight away. And other times they'll just want to break on you. Just the fly tan, you have to be patient. So then get my rub, come up over, catching in the hackle, and then just quickly take it up around about four turns or so. Now as we get near the front here, what we do is we just pull it, pull the fibres back and bring the, the rib through and catch it in. Went three or four turns to secure it at this point, and then trim away both the hackle and uh, the rib. Just going to wax my thread. Just draw it back. Don't be shy with the hackle length. This is, if you want it shorter, then it's up to yourself. Yeah, I'm just going to get a wee bit of Velcro just to bring out a wee bit of the flash. Just lift it out. Just a wee bit of sparkle into it. And then we've got, this is uh, the rump feather from a golden pheasant which has been dyed. It's been dyed orange. 
So when you tie this in, just take away the fluff. Just pull back. You tighten by the tip. So we pull back the fibre either side. Trim away the excess. Again, make sure the wax on your thread. The octopus style is just a long, nice hackle. So it's you could the original was like, a, well, it was as far as I believe it is Stan Headley's fly, and uh, it was slightly different from this. It was a red, if I remember right, breast feather from the, the golden pheasant rather than the rump feather from the golden pheasant. An olive body, so but I got it started. So then. The best known one now is the olive, the Melvin octopus, which is basically olive, the, the green or the chartreuse tail. So see, this is just a variant. So we tie that in. A lovely octopus-like movement in the fly. Now I'm going to give an impression of a, a wing. Uh, got some bronze mallard. So okay. Feather here I've been using this is just a large feather. You don't need much, it's just an impression. Not overdress the fly too much. I mean it's quite heavy as it is, so you don't want to go too much. So we've got a sort of width of uh, bronze marlar fibres are straight, nice and straight. We're just gonna fold it. As I say, it doesn't look much, but it's enough to give the impression of a wing. We want this here so just before the end of the the tail, so we tie that in three or four turns. Trim and make sure you wax your thread, give yourself grip, tidy this area up. Uh, get your cell in this case, you could use guinea fill, but what I'm using here, this is uh, grey partridge feathers dyed, a dyed uh, teal blue. So we take away the fluff. Teal blue or kind of kingfisher blue, ideal colour. I actually use a teal blue dye to get this colour, so what I'm doing is just revealing the tip of the, the feather. Now you only need a couple of turns, you don't need all these fibres, so you can trim them or pull them away. So I'm just going to trim, leave a bit of a mill or so at the tip of the hackle so I can tie it in. I'm just going to use my hackle pliers here. Stroke the fibre back. Nice straight turn. You only want a couple of turns, so there's me into the second. Just lift it up, follow it with the thread, put a 90 degree bend into the stem, and secure it in nice and tight. All the way back up. You could fold the hackle back, but it's a wee bit thick. I fold the stem back, sorry. So, what I'm going to do is just break that off. Make sure you've waxed your thread. See how the fibre's in. It's fine. Now we've got a jungle cock eye. And you can see this one is split, so I'm going to use just a single jungle cock eye split to form the eyes. And I'm just going to encourage that split further down so I can tie it in. So we just offer it on the top, folding down. Half either side, two or three turns just to hold it at this point, see how it's going to sit. Nah, that'll do it. Check the length is okay, yep. And then what I do is I fold it back. I just tuck the feather back. Start to wind back up. But before I get to the top, we can then just take my time, trim this away. Form a nice head. Let me straight in what finish. Again, just forming the head. And there we go. And that's uh, the Dunkeld octopus. A good fly. Now, as I'm going to show you here, uh, I used a smaller feather for international size, which is far shorter in length with the, the longer. You have to roll the fibre on to do that. 
to make it a wee bit smaller because there's not many small hackles that stay within the rules. But this is the, the original, this is what the this original size would be. So then what we do to finish the fly off, just vanish around. All the way around. And there we are. And that's your dunkeled octopus. I see a good fly. Uh, it's a, actually a very good sea trout salmon fly as well. And uh, it can easily be fished for almost uh, the brown trout in reduced sizes. If you don't, you can. If you don't have any of the rump feathers, just use a large orange shackle from the top, top of the cape. You could use them up, so you could, and uh, it'll still give you a nice, nice shape, a nice it's a idea of this style of fly. So I hope you enjoyed that, and that's the killed octopus. Thank you.